Um, first, I want to thank Indo-US Rare for inviting me to be part of this inaugural event and this esteemed panel. My name is Maria Dallaraca, and I'm a bilingual genetic counselor who's been exposed to rare diseases from early on in my life when I worked at a daycare center in a rural community during my undergraduate years. I met an infant with cystic fibrosis, a toddler with hereditary fructose intolerance, and a teen with extradermal um, pigmentosa. And I've had several family members diagnosed with rare diseases, an aunt with myosthenius gravis and a cousin with a dio, uh, myelodysplastic syndrome and paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinemia, uh, sorry, hemoglobinuria. From an early age, I saw firsthand the experience of underserved communities and challenges they face. My cousin, who was of mixed race, had a difficult time finding a match for his bone marrow transplant not having an option of a related donor, had to find an unrelated donor um, that was a perfect match. As we know, finding a match can be very, very challenging, especially when you're of mixed ethnicity. It is even more challenging. Although a donor from Brazil was found, unfortunately, my cousin never had a bone marrow transplant and he uh, ended up passing away before his 18th birthday. All of these experiences uh, inspired me to work within the rare disease space with a focus on de, uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. Currently, I'm the uh, Senior Director of Support and Education Programs at Global Genes. Uh, Global Genes is a rare disease patient uh, advocacy organization focused on providing advocates worldwide with a continuum of services to accelerate their path from early support, diagnosis, and awareness through research readiness, using a collaborative approach that involves patient advocates, biopharma researchers, and funders. At Global Genes, I oversee the various support and education programs, including the Rare Concierge Program, which is a free patient navigation service that assists undiagnosed and diagnosed patients, caregivers, and families affected by rare diseases. I also oversee the Rare Compassion Program, which is a program that provides medical students the opportunity to learn about the unique challenges and needs individuals and their families face when living with an undiagnosed or diagnosed rare disease. And um, I also, one of the other programs I oversee is the Global Advocacy Alliance, which is a global community of close to 700 nonprofit organizations and support groups. Global Genes believes that D, E, I, and A is at the core of our work. We strive to ensure that all of our programs work in uh, ensuring D, E, I, A. Two of our support and education programs exclusively target historically marginalized and underserved communities. Our Know Your Family History Initiative, done in conjunction with the Rare Disease Diversity Coalition, and our All in Rare program, which is in partnership with Rare uh, KC and the community of Wyandotte County in Kansas City. Our Know Your Family History initiative aims to increase awareness and understanding of family history, of family health history and its importance in reducing the time of diagnosis within the African-American, Black and Latinx communities. Our All in Rare program supports bi-directional communication and education about rare diseases between underserved and historically marginalized communities and diverse stakeholders via community health ambassadors. Together with these community leaders, we're working to improve health outcomes, provide increased access to patient support and diagnostic tests, as well as bolster trust and participation in rare disease research. We established our All in Rare program because we know that underserved communities are largely underrepresented in research and clinical trials, with 16% of uh, only comprising 16% of research study participants which often leads, as we all know, to a lack of understanding about how effective current therapies are for these diverse communities and missed opportunities on how to improve diagnostics. Compounding this is issue further is the fact that some rare diseases are known to disproportionately affect people of color, like what we see in sickle cell anemia and um, transthyretin uh, amyloid uh, cardiomyopathy, which is a genetic condition that disproportionately causes heart failure in people of African descent. One of the most commonly known variants for that disease um, in the U.S. is believed to affect up to 5% of the West African population. Nonetheless, although clin clinical um, trials.gov lists studies for this condition, they do not appear to include African countries as sites or recruitment centers or state explicitly or state explicit goals for the recruitment of, patient, of Black patients. 
Another population, which some of my colleagues have already mentioned um, that is underserved are those living in rural communities. Clinical trials may be less accessible to them, um, and they're estimated to make up 19% of the U.S. population. As most clinical sites are mainly conducted in urban medical centers and typically require long travel distances. Another factor that might contribute to the longer travel time is the fact that the number of sites for many rare disease clinic, uh, clinical trials are limited. The time commitment and inconvenience of participation in clinical trials are greater for rare residents, uh, uh, rural residents, especially when the uh, trials include multiple in-person visits. Um, as you can imagine, the complexities of managing travel logistics create, emotion, create an emotional and financial burden for these patients who are already under physical and emotional stress. Many cannot contemplate participating in clinical trials because of these additional challenges. And I'm sure you'll hear from others about the language barriers that present that are also uh, represent an issue of particular uh, importance in clinical trial recruitment. For example, the geographic origins of the U.S. Hispanic population are heterogeneous, as, as similar to what we're hearing about the Indian population, representing more than 20 different Spanish-speaking countries here in the U.S because 38% of U.S. Hispanics are estimated to speak uh, Spanish primarily or exclusively, Spanish translations of research-related materials should be universally rendered in a manner that promotes understanding and exclusive, uh, inclusivity. Variations in dialect and terms, as well as variability in culture, can present translation challenges and require a thoughtful approach to translating English language recruitment content and messaging into Spanish. And the same can be said about India. As a country with over 120 different languages, the diversity present, uh, present requires in-depth understanding and knowledge of the language and culture. Not only will it be important to translate materials like informed consent forms into participants' languages, we also need to ensure that the staff working closely with these study participants speak the language and are aware of the culture or that have a professional translator available to, to assist. To further uh, um, add to the complexity, the varying literacy levels um, found within the country creates another set of challenges in producing appropriate and effective documents and publications. It's also important to recognize that to truly ensure DEI and A, we must also publish the results from these clinical trials in a manner that's understandable and digestible by all study participants. We wanna make sure that information gets back to them. And then there is also the topic of rare disease and di disabilities, which we heard um, Sarah mentioned. Um, awareness of disabilities is just the first step in designing clinical trials that are accessible to patients that may have a disability. For example, consider a clinical trial for a patient population impacted by severe vision loss. There's some barriers to participation that may not be very obvious to us. And so those are things that we need to keep in mind when designing these trials. So understanding the nuances of the rare disease space is critical to increasing diversity, equity, inclusion, and access for these underserved and underrepresented communities.